You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question yourself, you can visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. Okay, Brother Shib Dr. Shibarala, here's a question. What is Islam's view on Eastern religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism? Well, well we cannot speak of one view of, of Islam here. We can just say that there are a variety of Muslim approaches to this question. Actually, the, the person s further s specifies and says, what does the Quran have to say about those religions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we, we have to say that the Quran says very little, and this okay. is why a variety of Muslim views are, are possible. Uh, th there are some Muslims who uh, take some verses of the Quran in, in the most literal sense possible, and based on that, they have the understanding that only Islam can as, as we know it as the religion today, uh, being uh, preached by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, some 1400 years ago, that only that faith uh, can lead one to salvation. And based on that, there will be some accommodation for uh, people of the book and, and other monotheistic uh, religions. Uh, in the sense that if people were following a monotheistic religion prior to the message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reaching them, then, then their following of that monotheistic message would also lead to salvation. Mm -hmm. But then, I in, the, in that case as well, when the Prophet Muhammad's message reaches them, they would be obligated to follow that message, otherwise they could not be saved. Okay. Now, uh, where does that leave the... Uh, people like of India and China and many parts of the world where people have followed religions which uh, seem uh, very remote from the monotheistic concepts that we know of from Judaism, Christianity and now in Islam. Um, uh, some others like myself want to have a, a, a broad view that, that emphasizes the mercy of God to all people. Uh, for example, I would say that uh, it would seem odd that, that God would single out people in one region of the world, give them the light of guidance, and ignore all of the other people everywhere else. Well, a, a common conception of Muslims, all Muslims agree, that God has sent prophets and messengers to all people, because this is what is actually said in the Quran. But now if we look for the Hebrew prophets, we find them in the Bible. Uh, if we look for prophets who have come to India or to China or any other part of the world, uh, we, we are hard pressed to find who these prophets are. Sometimes we can find a person who seems to have some monotheistic conceptions, which is what we expect that the prophets would have preached, mm. uh, such as Zoroaster, uh, who seems to have had a monotheistic conception, though Zoroastrianism uh, now largely is, is known to have uh, also incorporated the idea of, of, of a duality. Um, uh, but at, at its base, it seems to be monotheistic. Uh, but other than this, like how do we regard the uh, Siddhartha Gautama, for example, or known as the Buddha in Buddhism? How do we regard some of the uh, Indian heroes uh, uh, who may know some by name? Uh, we have heard of Vishnu and Shiva and uh, Rama and and. Um, and so on, so mm -hmm. and Krishna. So how do we regard all of these? Well, for do, do uh, we see them as good? Or? Well, what we know of their teachings now uh, seem very different from the monotheistic conceptions. Mm -hmm. And so those who would insist that only uh, one who is known for his monotheism could be a prophet, um, some like myself are, are willing to say that uh, these figures could have taught something like monotheism. But now, if we think about Jesus on whom be peace, he, the teachings that are attributed to him from within Christianity, uh, hardly emphasize his uh, his teaching on on Tawhid or monotheism as Muslims ex understand it. I, Christians also uh, hold to a monotheism, but it's one that is very different from that of Judaism and Islam. Um, and if those if that teaching is attributed to Jesus, Muslims would have difficulty thinking of Jesus as a prophet of Islam teaching those things. Well, I in a similar way, when we hear the teachings that are attributed to all of these uh, heroes of other parts of the world, uh, we might find it strange. But uh, the possibility is always there that if we were to dig far enough historically, we might find that these uh, figures actually taught something which is very similar uh, to the monotheism as we understand it now uh, it within, within Islam.
But I want to look more broadly than even this and suggest that uh, in, in every nation and in every society and in every situation, people are faced with uh, a range of options. And people uh, often cannot think outside of that range. They can only see things within that range. And the good people in those societies are those who are picking the good things from within that range, limited though the range is. And so these individuals that we hear about could have been good people who are picking the good things and teaching others to pick the good things from within uh, that range. They would not be called technically prophets, given that term that we use uh, in a specific way, but, but they should be regarded as good persons and, and uh, good models and sages uh, of their time and for their people. All right, hopefully this message will inspire people to show respect towards those of the Eastern religions. I hope so. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabira. You're welcome. That's all the time we have. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.